Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Viren Raskina. I'm the former captain of the Indian hockey team, uh, currently the director and CEO of not-for-profit organization Olympic Gold Quest. Uh, uh, before starting the session, I just want to say a very big thank you to Sports Authority of India for, for starting this wonderful initiative of a speaker series from various experts in different aspects of sport. Uh, it's been some fascinating insights over the last two weeks uh, from so many experts. And uh, uh, today I am going to be discussing on a topic about the ecosystem of an elite athlete. Uh, before we get into that, uh, I remember quite a few years back, uh, I was talking to the Australian uh, uh, great hockey player and, and former hockey coach, Rick Charlesworth. And, and, and Rick always told me that, um, you know, within most meetings and sessions, take almost one hour to one and a, one and a half hour. And in his opinion, um, uh, meetings and sessions should not be more than 40 minutes long because uh, after that, everyone's attention span went downhill. So in adherence to that, I'm going to try and keep my session uh, 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 to around 35 to 40 minutes and after that I'm going to open it out uh, uh, to various uh, queries and questions from all of you all. So, so please do keep uh, the questions uh, uh, flowing in. Uh, so let's get back to our, our topic, ecosystem of an elite athlete. Uh, I've had the good fortune in having had the opportunity uh, to play with the Indian hockey team at the highest level of sport. Uh, uh, I played at the Athens 2004 Olympics. And when I look back over the years, I think um, I was really lucky to have a very good ecosystem for me growing up. Uh, and I hope that I can share some of those uh, insights and experiences with you over these next uh, uh, 60 minutes. Uh, so let's start with the most important ingredient in the ecosystem of an elite athlete. And uh, I've actually chopped down 20 points that go into making that ecosystem. Uh, there may be more as well that I may have missed, but these are some of the more important ones that I felt uh, are very relevant uh, uh, to most athletes, coaches, and, and people in, in, involved in preparing uh, athletes at the highest level to represent India. So point number one in that ecosystem is the coach uh, uh, itself. Of all the ingredients that go into the mix of building world champions, Olympic champions, I think the coach is the single most important ingredient. Uh, I don't know of a single athlete who has gone on to achieve at the highest level who did not have a quality coach working behind him or her. Uh, I myself at various levels had different coaches uh, training me. And I'd like to add here that it's just not the one coach who say uh, uh, is our coach at the highest level, at a senior level that is important, but every coach along the way that is important. It may be uh, uh, the grassroots level coaches, it may be the intermediate coaches, it may be the uh, elite level coaches. Each one of them has a role to play and each one's role is very important. So, uh, 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 you know, growing up, I, I remember when I was in school, I was in St. Stanislaus High School in, in Bandra, and my school had a, a, a tradition and culture of, of playing hockey, and we were lucky to have uh, a, a big hockey field uh, as well. It was a grass ground at, at that point of time. And, and my coach at that time was uh, a, a hockey Olympian uh, who played at the 1984 uh, Los Angeles Olympics, uh, Marcellus Gomes. And really at that point of time, in the very impressionable age for me, 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, Marcellus Gomes taught me everything uh, that I knew at that point of time. And when I think back, if it was not for Marcellus Gomes, uh, there was no way that I would have gone on uh, to play for India. And there were so many coaches along the way. Uh, when I uh, reached junior India, there was uh, 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 Harinder Singh, uh, C.R. Kumar, Clarence Lobo. Uh, uh, there was Ban uh, 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 Bansalji who was my coach at uh, uh, Indian Oil Corporation. Um, there was the Olympian Daryl D'Souza who was my uh, coach uh, uh, in, in Air India, Cl Clarence Lobo. Uh, 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 coached me at, at Tata, so I had so many coaches along the way. And then I, when I went to the senior Indian team, there was Cedric D'Souza, Bhaskaran, 
Rajinder Singh Senior. So you know, I learned so much from so many of these coaches. And the interesting part was that every coach had a different style of functioning. Every coach had a different method of coaching. But I always tried to take the good points from various coach and use those points to mold me into a, a better player. Uh, so, so like I said, the coach is the one who not just prepares the uh, the plans and programs, but he's really the one who implements every uh, everything. He's the one who gets all the stakeholders together to ensure that the best possible plans are put in place uh, uh, for, for the athlete. Uh, point number two in the ecosystem, I think, uh, extremely important is act the actual physical infrastructure and location where athletes are, are training. Um, I remember when I was uh, part of the Indian team in both my junior and senior days, most of the national training camps uh, were in Sai Kingeri in, in, in Bangalore. And if you look at Sai Kingeri Bangalore today, the infrastructure there has improved by leaps and, and, and bounds. Uh, you know, when you look at infrastructure for an elite athlete, you want the right venue, you want the right location, the right climate. Uh, you want to see that there's uh, the right facilities, the right uh, equipment, and preferably all training facilities under one roof. Uh, so just not the the actual training pitch or courts or, or say a boxing ring, or a, a wrestling mat. You also want the accommodation, you want food, you want medical facilities, you want a gym, you want a swimming pool, recovery facilities. If everything is in, un, under one roof, that is uh, that would have been the ideal scenario. And I'm glad to say that in the last decade, if you look at the various size centers across the country, a lot of private facilities have also come up over the last couple of years. You have the JSW facility in Bellary, you have the Padukon Dravid Center for Sports Excellence in Bangalore. I think they have simply marvelous class facilities and it's good uh, that athletes are getting exposure to much better venues and face, uh, facilities. Um, I think some, uh, things like climate play a major role when you're uh, when you're training, especially for outdoor sports. So take for example archery. It's very hard uh, to train for archery when it's extremely cold in, in the north of India uh, during winter, uh, especially for morning training sessions when the temperature goes down to less than five degrees and and you're out there in in, in the open uh, open field uh, trying to do archery. So I think the right venue, the right locations are very very important. Uh, obviously, gym, uh, gym facilities to ensure equipment is uh, up to date. They are uh, 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 they're running in good conditions. These are the little things that make a difference because at the highest level of sport, it is really the one percenters that make a difference. If we get one percent better in each and 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 every aspect, I think cumulatively uh, 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 the uh, uh, elite athletes will progress much more. Point number three is the physiotherapy. Uh, I think increasingly physiotherapy is playing such a major role in, in sport where fitness levels are going through the roof and recovery is getting more and more essential. So at the, at the highest level you want your, uh, uh, the, the physiotherapy team to be experienced, you want them to be well qualified, you want them to have a good temperament, um, uh, you, you want them to have experience in dealing with senior athletes. Uh, uh, they should be able to uh, take the rough and tough life of national uh, camps. Uh, it's very different from being a good physio in the clinic and being a good physio on field. Uh, because on field is a very tough life uh, uh, and, 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 and you want your physios to be there every single day, every single uh, 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 session experiencing what the athletes uh, go through. And, I think a good physio would be able to, uh, uh, to a large extent, uh, pre prevent uh, injuries with a lot of uh, uh, with assessments and and day to day work. A very important aspect is to monitor uh, uh, daily uh, wellness, uh, wherein we can understand if an athlete is going towards injury, maybe due to over uh, training, or you want to help them to help in load load management in. Uh, enhancing the quality of movement uh, really. Uh, I think physios play such an important role in recovery of athletes, especially in the physical sports. But really every sport of physio is very important. I would also add here in good medical facilities, we should have doctors on call, uh, especially for some of the most common injuries uh, that we face. 
uh, uh, I would say um, uh, 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 back, ankle, knee, shoulder. These are some of the most common injuries that face even even ENT uh, problems. Uh, uh, good doctors should be on call so that uh, the uh, uh, the speed of service to the athlete is is very quick. The next I would go is uh, uh, to uh, the trainer. And uh, again, I think you want trainers who are very up to date with the latest uh, training methods. Uh, the trainer should be able to do the regular measurable assessments for the athletes and inform the coach on increasing and decreasing, decreasing loads. Uh, uh, there are different loads that you give to an athlete uh, uh, during off season when you're closer to competition. And I think the trainer has a very essential role to play. I would add here understanding the nature of the sport is very, very important. Uh, uh, take, for example, different physical sports like hockey, uh, badminton, boxing, wrestling. In all these sports, you need to be physically extremely fit, but the nature of training for every sport is, is uh, uh, different. Uh, uh, every sport has unique skill sets as far as with physical parameters are concerned. So if you uh, look at hockey, if you look at uh, football, you need a lot of endurance. Um, if you look at badminton, you need to be very quick over a short period. So your agility uh, ha has to be really good over a 5 to 10 uh, meter area. Uh, 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 being able to lunge, being able to recover uh, back on your movements in 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 in, in uh, uh, boxing and wrestling also. Uh, in boxing, uh, today there are three rounds of three minutes each. That's nine minutes. Wrestling is two rounds of three minutes each. That's six minutes. And it's really a sprint. It's And you got to be, uh, you got to be bang, bang, bang on it from uh, uh, the first second until uh, 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 the final whistle. So I think the skill sets of different sports are different. It's very important for the physical uh, uh, trainer to understand the specific natures and unique skill sets to every sport. Uh, point number five, I would go to the nutritionist. Uh, I think diet is, is playing an increasingly important role in, in modern, a modern sport. And uh, uh, we've had some excellent sessions by Ryan Fernando on the various aspects of diet. I'm no expert in that. But just from an athlete point of view, what I would say uh, out there, my advice to players, coaches, nutritionists is to just ensure that the diet is simple, practical and implementable. Very often I see nutritionists giving very complicated diets, which on paper theoretically is very good. But the key thing is to be able uh, for the athlete to implement the diet and availability of those uh, 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 of, of those uh, 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 supplements and food is very, very uh, critical. Uh, right options for elite players that are traveling a lot on tour. I think the right options while uh, traveling abroad, especially on tour, is very uh, critical. More so for vegetarians. <clears throat> More than 50% of the elite athletes in India are vegetarian. And I remember growing up, for me, I've seen a lot of the uh, hockey players on tour, the, especially the vegetarians really almost living on fruits, salads and bread. And uh, honestly, that's not the ideal uh, 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 ideal diet, especially in a hard physical uh, sport. Uh, natural food is obviously the best, uh, uh, but supplements are definitely required uh, for especially power sports like uh, 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 wrestling, boxing, uh, hockey today as well, where recovery is essential. I would like to advise all athletes and coaches please do not overdose on supplements without the right advice uh, from uh, the right professionals. Uh, I think regular quarterly blood uh, blood tests uh, are very important also and supplements prescribed uh, accordingly. Uh, uh, at OGQ, we're trying to do a lot of blood tests, quarterly blood tests with all the athletes. And uh, I think at, uh, we've seen a lot of trends coming out with a lot of deficiencies in most of the, even the elite athletes. Uh, 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 I think the one biggest deficiency is is, is vitamin D. Uh, and uh, 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 that's especially for female athletes. And that's something that can be uh, uh, corrected. 
also in weight based sports where you have to either cut weight or put on a uh, weight i think the right nutrition is very important uh, the, uh, if the right nutrition program is that helps uh, it ensures that we cut weight or gain weight without uh, the affecting the performance and also ensures that we improve muscle uh, uh, recovery um, uh, i think one of, the, uh, one of the best examples here are mary com in, uh, in in her weight category mary com currently fights in the 51 kg weight category in boxing initially mary won her first three world championships in the 46 kg weight category i think the fourth one she won in 48 and and thereafter she's won all the medals in in 51 uh, weight weight category i may be a little bit wrong over here but uh, more or less mary was initially a 46 kg boxer and 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 today she's fighting at 51 kg so it's very important for the nutrition program to put on the right kind of weight in other examples say a uh, uh, ravi uh, uh, kumar in, in in wrestling where ravi fights in the 57 kg ravi has recently uh, 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 won the quota for the tokyo 2020 olympics and uh, ravi's uh, body weight in normal training where he say one month away from the competition is around 60 to 61 kilos so again the right diet the right supplements are very critical to help ravi come down the weight categories and i'm sure many coaches out there face same issues with uh, uh, their athletes and i think having the right nutritionist working with the athlete is, is very critical uh, point number 6 i would go to the sports psychologist I think this is one of the biggest gap areas in Indian sport, and it's going to get wider over the next decade. Um, uh, the role of the sports psychologist is getting more and more important. I see the need and acceptability uh, has been gradually increasing. Previously, until the time I was playing uh, a, a decade back, uh, the coach was really the whole and soul of everything. He was the coach. He was the trainer, physio, nutritionist, <clears throat> uh, even the <clears throat> sports psychologist. But today, I think sports psychology is, is playing an in, uh, uh, a more and more important role over here, and it's a very specialized field. I would like to uh, say here that winning the trust of the athlete. is a very key ingredient and we really need to develop good indian sports psychologists i i uh, uh, i emphasize on the word indian because it's still okay with foreign coaches foreign physios foreign trainers but when it comes to a sports psychologist uh, uh, i think the language understanding language and understanding culture plays a very critical role over here uh uh so um and when i say that because as a psychologist you won't be discussing very personal very in intimate details with an athlete and to be able to understand the challenges face and uh, uh, another crucial element is this is for the psychologist to actually be present in training training sessions and here again understanding the nature of the sport understanding the nature of the challenges that every individual athlete faces so so take for example badminton the challenges faced by saina would be very different from the challenges faced by sindhu though, though both both of them play in in uh, women singles uh, badminton events so uh, understanding those unique challenges is very critical i think it's also important for the sports psychologists to actually travel on tour with athletes because most of the <coughs> most of the challenges actually crop up during competition and uh, understanding the pressures faced during competition the day before an important match the one hour leading uh, up to an important bout i think those challenges are very critical and and, and i like to repeat what i said earlier these are the one percenters that sometimes make the difference between participating and and actually winning point number 7 uh, is the video analyst uh, you know uh, video analysis is another area where india has been a little bit behind the curve uh, i remember in a sport like hockey during my playing days some of the uh, advanced hockey playing nations of australia holland germany uh, uh, at that point of time had top quality video analysts uh, 
and for india it uh, video analysts uh, uh, did come into the picture a decade back uh, but i think we uh, the quality of analysis was was not really good uh, i remember us uh, uh, video recording an entire match and then when we had time off we would see the entire match but it was not really broken up for the athlete the video analysts did not understand uh, 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 hockey re really well there was no coordination with what the coach wants when i went to germany to uh, play for a year in the bundesliga i actually understand uh, understood what's the what, what a difference quality video analysis makes there the video analyst was worked at extreme speed understood hockey very intimately worked in tandem with the coach broke up videos into 2 3 minute clippings and every a uh, hockey player was made to see only what he needed to see and it really helped tremendously in knowing what to expect in a match it helped us understand the very specific uh, strengths and weaknesses of your opponents and and the and the mistakes that we were making before so i think uh, uh, that played a bigger role uh I think over here uh, also one more point that we should add is the uh, uh, the quality of software and to a large extent budgets determine uh, 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 that. Um, uh, yeah, it goes without saying that the video analyst must be very uh, uh, comfortable with the software because the software will throw you a thousand parameters. But the key thing is to be able to use those five six parameters that will uh, create impact for the players and the coach. Uh, I'd just like to go back to one point on the physical trainer, where I would like to merge it with the sports scientists, uh, of, especially on taking a regu uh, regular physical assessments and tests, and to monitor them effectively to to check regular fitness levels of athletes. I think the one grouse with coaches and athletes uh, versus the sports scientists is that there is a big gap between what is done in the lab. and what is implemented on the training field so it's i think very important to bridge that gap and i think a a, a big role needs to be played that uh, testing is reflected then in in training so we keep on improving based on on tests here so the sports scientist has a very important role to play uh, we have had some wonderful sessions by dr nikhil latte by uh, shrikant anger by wayne lombard uh, david john i think these people are are Are, are the best people in the country on physiotherapy, physical training, sports science. So they understand, and um, uh, we all need to work together to bridge uh, uh, that gap. Uh, the next point, point number eight in our ecosystem, I would like to say is the quality of campers and sparring partners. When you're getting a bunch of elite athletes training together, it's very important to maintain a. very high intensity of training ensure that there is no com complacency get quality and uh, uh, and consistent sparring be it uh, wrestling be it boxing be it badminton uh, be, be it hockey matches ensure that there is healthy competition so for uh, for boxing uh, you want sparring partners that are orthodox that are south paws primarily left handed punchers you want taller opponents one shorter opponents i was reading a fascinating article on on uh, one of the reasons why amit pangal is is doing so well in in men's 52 uh, kgs because he's really short for that weight categories and most of the uh, world's top boxers in that weight category are actually not used to dealing with someone of the short stature or uh, uh, of amit so uh, in 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 training you really want uh the different kinds of opponents opponents with uh, different styles and um, i remember for hockey uh you want your goalkeepers to train against hockey drag flickers every single day in training and one of the weak areas for indian hockey over the years uh, for our goalkeepers was actually facing quality drag flickers because drag flicking is a very unique skill it is a extremely difficult skill and in the in uh, india has very few quality drag flickers so back in the day there was jugraj singh there was uh, sandeep singh there was raghunath but after that there was no one and only the indian the three or four goalkeepers who were in the indian camp actually got to train against this quality drag flickers the rest of the goalkeepers in the country never even got to train against uh, quality drag flickers and they found it really tough when they faced top class 
uh, uh, drag flicker. So it's very important uh, uh, to ensure that our, the quality of the camp is maintained. Uh, all the campers, sparring partners are at a very, very high level. Point number nine is uh, junior athletes at an elite level. All athletes at some point of time went to the junior stage, be it Mary Com, be it Sushil Kumar, be it Saina Neval, uh, be it Sindhu. And uh, it is, I cannot stress on the importance to ensure that our most talented young junior players are put under the right processes in place when they are young. Because when you are at that, like I said earlier, the impressionable age of 12, 13, 16, 15, that is the time when you form habits. Now, habits can be good habits or bad habits. Uh, and, and it's very in, uh, important to ensure that you form good habits uh, uh, while, while playing. And uh, another important habit is to ensure that young players do not lose the joy of training and make training uh, uh, fun. Because when we start them at 11, 12, 13, it's going to be 10 to 12 years before they maybe eventually go to the Olympics. That's a long time of very formal training. So it's very important that the joy of training is not taken away. And uh, uh, a suggestion here to coaches to make training sessions as, as uh, fun as possible. I'm going to touch upon that a little bit later. Um, again, I just like to say that, uh, that the junior period, especially 17 to 22 or so, is an age group where we need to be very patient because uh, that is a very crucial transition period. Not everyone transitions successfully and some people mature later. I think Sindhu and Saina started winning at a very early age. By, uh, by 16, 17, they were winning senior international tournaments. Uh, but I think a good example of someone who matured later was, was uh, 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 Shrikanth. Shrikan took a little bit uh, time to mature. He, he was actually a doubles player right at the start. Uh, he didn't get uh, the best results in his junior days, but he went on to become world number one. So I think patience during the junior period is, is very, very important. Uh, point number 10 in the, uh, uh, in, in the ecosystem is training under pressure. Uh, I think again, crucial for maintaining quality, intensity and seriousness of training sessions because the golden rule over here is that if you cannot uh, uh, do it in training, then it's going to be extremely hard to do it in the match. Um, I'll, I'll take the example of a, a, a hockey striker over here. Uh, my biggest problem with training sessions in India is that we do not maintain a very high intens uh, 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 intensity. So take, for example, a center forward in hockey. In training, they receive the ball under no pressure. They're able to turn, take their time, and, and, and then take a shot at the goal. While in reality, in a match against a big, strong European def or, or Australian defenders, you will never, ever get that time. Everything happens in split seconds. You have to be smart enough to take decisions uh, uh, quickly and, 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 and think and make the right decision under pressure in a split second. So uh, I request all coaches in every sport, uh, it's okay if you keep training sessions shorter as opposed to longer. In India, we have training sessions that are three hours and four hours. I've trained abroad in, in Germany and Australia. The one thing I liked about training sessions that they were never more than an hour and a half, but they literally kill you in the training sessions. The load, the intensity, the quality was far more than even what you would experience in the match. And that really helped you deal with the pressures of match situations uh, much be better. So many people say that you have to do uh, something 10,000 times before you get really good at it. I would say it's okay to do it 1,000 times, but do it 1,000 times in uh, under a very quality high intensity uh, and pressure backed training environment point number 11 is uh, i think fun training sessions uh, very very critical to make training sessions fun and enjoyable uh, i remember for me i started playing hockey for fun i started, i played gully hockey in the in the lanes of of bandra and, and, I, and I enjoyed it. I never even dreamt that one day I would want to play for India. I would uh, play at the Olympics. Uh, the, 
the best coaches always innovate and ensure that training sessions are, are, are not too repetitive and boring. Repetition in training has its advantages, but beyond, beyond a certain point, we always need to innovate. Uh, I think something that helps here is to ensure that athletes uh, can make decisions on their own rather than spoon feeding them all the, all the time. Because we must remember that when the athlete steps across those white lines and goes to play, they're going to have to play on their own and make decisions uh, on their own. Uh, we cannot be spoon feeding athlete, elite athletes all the time. Uh, in elite athletes, the best players have the quality of, of, of really adapting to changing uh, scenarios. And one of the things we can do to make tra training uh, 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 more fun, more better, is to help athletes themselves uh, sometimes uh, design training sessions. Uh, 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 Athletes have to be brave enough and smart enough to take decisions uh, on their own. Uh, I remember CR Kumar, uh, my first uh, uh, coach in the junior India hockey team, he always said, uh, do not ensure that your guys, it's okay to make mistakes, but make some new mistakes. Do not re repeat mistakes. I think elite athletes, whether junior level, senior level, have to learn very quickly from mistakes. So coaches out there, it's okay if athletes make mistakes, but it's not uh, uh, okay if they repeat mistakes. Uh, 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 allow athletes to design their own drills, take feedback, and uh, uh, do not spoon feed, spoon feed them at all times. I think that the best coaches are those that help athletes to think on their own. Point number 12 is about rest and recovery. I think uh, uh, Shrikant Iyengar and, and Nikhil uh, Latte touched upon this and I cannot emphasize more on the importance of rest and recovery. Uh, I would say that rest and recovery is actually as important as training it, it, it itself. And it's actually one of the most neglected areas in Indian sport. Almost all athletes across the board today are overtrained. And with the result that when we actually approach a major uh, uh, tournaments or Commonwealth Games, Asian Games, World Cups, World Championships, Olympics, most players are actually jaded and tired when actually you should be fresh, hungry and raring to go. So the coach, the physical trainer, the sports scientist, the physio, they have a very, very important role to play to ensure that there's adequate rest and recovery for the athletes. And, and, and they are not being overloaded and overtrained because the chances of injury then start, start multiplying. Point number 13 is uh, promptness of support to the athlete. At the highest level of sport, it's just not the quality of training that is important, but something that is equally important is the speed of support. And uh, I think I would like to give the example of two areas here that is very important. Uh, where one is dealing with, with, with injuries. Uh, say uh, 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 Sindhu or, 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 or Mericom or Saina uh, uh, get injured or, or a Vinesh Fogart get injured. It's, um, uh, it, you know, it's no use getting them to the best specialists and doctors after two weeks. We have to ensure that uh, the best possible medical attention is given to them within 24 hours. So in injury management, speed has a very critical role. Um, I would also say in terms of equipment, um, uh, in, in sports like shooting and archery, the equipment is very critical, it's very complicated, it's very expensive, very often these are imported equipment. So we have to plan very carefully to ensure that the best possible equipment is got to these athletes at an early stage. It takes months and months, sometimes even a year to get used to it. I remember for me, playing with a new hockey stick was so tough. Uh, it, it took me months to get the right feel uh, of, of the hockey stick. So you can imagine uh, 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 in a sport like shooting where a, a, a rifle comprises of almost 100 parts, where every millimeter, uh, if, if a screw is, is, is not right here or there, it, it, it has an effect in overall performance. So I think speed in support has a big role to play in the entire ecosystem. Uh, point number 14 that I'd like to go to is good balance of training and competition. Uh, it's very hard to train continuously 
without a goal in front of you and uh, uh, psychologically it's really challenging and that's one of the problems they're facing right now uh, uh, with the lockdown because of the uncertainty uh, of course now uh, the new olympic dates have just been announced so uh, uh, we know that's going to be on 23rd july 2021 but uh, uh, uncertainty stuff uh, also if an athlete is only training throughout the year without any competitions at all it's really hard to keep the athlete motivated uh, so i would say that regular competitions against different type of opposition is is very important that helps you test your metal against the best athletes in the world it helps you to play under uh, play against different opponents under different conditions uh, like i mentioned in boxing you want to be playing against the top south boss uh, top orthodox boxers taller opponents shorter opponents uh, you want opponents who uh, in, in 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 hockey uh, uh, you, you want to play against teams that have different playing styles so australia plays totally different from how germany plays both are strong teams but both play in a very different style so you want to play against different kinds of opponents it it, it also sees where where you currently stand where you need to improve so i think a critical part of a coach and federation's role is to ensure that there's a good mix of uh, training as well as competition Point number 15, very important, family support. Uh, I think uh, I would say that really lucky to uh, uh, to be blessed with a lovely family, lovely parents who, who encouraged me in every respect. Uh, I myself came from a very conservative background. Mom was a doctor, dad was an engineer. My two elder brothers were engineers. Uh, uh, and sometimes I, I, I look back and think that uh, 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 the only reason that I was allowed to play hockey, you know, at that time growing up in the 90s, you had to become a doctor or, or an engineer. And uh, 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 I think so my parents were super strict with my eldest brother and uh, he, he liked sport, but eventually he became an engineer. Uh, the second guy uh, loved sport a lot, especially football. Uh, 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 but eventually he became an engineer as well and um, by the time me, the, uh, the third kid came along, uh, 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 I think my parents allowed me to play hockey because by that time they were so fed up and not bothered about wh what I did at all. So that was one of the reasons I could play hockey freely. Uh, uh, but jokes apart, uh, uh, my uh, when I was a kid, my dad took me for hockey matches, football matches uh, and I was so inspired uh, uh, to play. Uh, 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 hockey and football. I remember seeing a Rovers Cup matches in at Cooperage, uh, watching East Bengal versus Mohammedan Sporting. My dad took me to the Bom uh, Mumbai Hockey Association. I watched uh, Indian Airlines play against BSF in the Bombay Gold Cup finals. So, uh, you know, uh, as an eight, nine uh, year old boy, I was just fascinated with that. And, I, and I'm really grateful to my parents. So, uh, parents and family have a very critical role to play. I would like to also say over here that. Uh, there's a fine line between encouraging parents and interfering parents. So uh, my request to all parents out there is to leave things to the coaches. Uh, encourage your kids, but do not interfere in training. We have to trust the coach. We have to trust the federation. They are professionals. They are experts. They know what's best to the athletes. So please be encouraging parents, but do not be interfering uh, uh, parents. Uh, <clears throat> uh, point number 16 is all stakeholders in sport working very closely together. Again, I must point out a brilliant role being played here by uh, by Sports Authority of India, uh, DG Sai, uh, uh, Sandeep Pradhan sir, uh, 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 Commander Raj Gopalan, the CEO of Tops, who played a wonderful role over the last four, uh, three, four years in getting all the stakeholders together in uh, uh, working for the elite athletes in, in, in Indian sports, uh, be it uh, uh, Sports Authority of India, the Sports Ministry, the National Sports Federations, various not-for-profit organizations like OGQ, Go Sports, JSW, Lakshya Sports, etc. that are all doing good work. And the good thing is everyone is working in tandem. It's very, very important. Because the goal is same. Everyone wants Indian athletes to do well. Everyone wants uh, Indian athletes to win medals for the country. And it's very critical that all stakeholders uh, work together in a good, healthy environment. 
Point number 17, um, I, I would mention here the attitude of, of athletes. Uh, I'll start by giving you examples of great attitude uh, of, of some of the top athletes. And for me, that is one of the biggest reasons why they are champions. Athletes like Mary Com, Meera Chopra, Vinesh Fogart, Meera Bai Chanu. I think the hunger, the fire, the desire that they have is unmatched. And that is one of the biggest reasons why they are at the level why they are. There are many athletes who are good, many athletes who are uh, 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 extremely good at what they are doing, extremely talented. But uh, I think they lack a little bit in focus, discipline, hunger, the ability to come back from defeat. I think these are, are really challenges uh, that are there. And having the right attitude for athletes is very critical. Uh, I'm almost finishing just three quick points before I open it out to questions is reaching the top versus maintaining consistency at top. Very often they say that reaching the top is easier, but when you actually reach the top, so it may be number one in your junior days, number one in senior days, number one in the world, staying consistently at the top is important and that requires extra effort to stay there because there's a big difference in, in uh, when you are the hunter and as opposed to when you are being the hunted and uh, I, I feel that the team working with the athlete and it might be individual sports but there's really an army of people working behind the scenes that are, are very important to continuously plan and implement changes point number 19 last couple of points just your management of the field for elite athletes it's not just the dealing with the pressures on the field but dealing with uh, it's what is equally important is dealing with pressures off the field. Um, I think athletes need to be very smart to know their priorities, know what's important. Uh, uh, today there are so many uh, activities to deal with, be it media, social uh, media, endorsements, events, travel schedule, visa. So it's very important to plan that very well. We cannot give excuses that there was too much work to do off the field, and so we were not well recovered enough to uh, to have. Uh, uh, to be really fresh for our training sessions and competition. And last is adaptability. Uh, champion athletes, champion teams, they adapt. They adapt to change, they adapt to tough conditions, they adapt to a very dynamic environment. In sport, nothing stays, stays constant. Every player, every team across the world is continuously improving. Sport science is improving and we have to adapt. And part of the adaptability is actually not complaining and grumbling. That is the biggest lesson I have learned from one of the from one of the biggest legends of Indian sport, Pratash Padukone, where he said that when he won the All England uh, 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 title in the 80s, uh, he never complained or grumbled. He didn't even have a proper badminton court to play in. He played in a in a wedding hall where the roof was a low roof, so he couldn't even toss his serve high while training. But he said that I converted a disadvantage into an advantage because I had to actually serve through the bars of the roof and it actually helped in improving my accuracy. So he became very accurate and I, I really admire Prakash sir because at that time he didn't have a proper coach, there was no physio, no trainer, no nutritionist, no mental trainer, nothing and he went to beat the best in the world. So players out there, you have to learn to adapt. There's no point complaining and grumbling. Yes, we need good facilities and all stakeholders are trying to do their best to ensure that they're the best facilities for our athletes. But for whatever reason, if you don't have something, try to make the best of what you have. Uh, I'd just like to quick, uh, quickly summarize by saying, Coach, before we open it out uh, to questions and before I scroll to all the questions, sorry, I think there are tons of them. Um, I would like to say that the coach is the most important ingredient in that mix to build Olympic and world uh, 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 champions. Uh, we often, we do not have all the elements uh, uh, due to various factors and the most important is being a resource of funding uh, crunch. Uh, but we have to learn to deal with it, always look at priorities and always try to ensure that there's a healthy working environment for our elite athletes. Uh, thank you very much with that and uh, with that I'm going to try and scroll down to the various uh, questions. Uh
uh, of uh, uh, that uh, that I'm getting. Uh, please give me some uh, time to uh, scroll down from it. Please keep the questions coming, and I'll try to answer uh, whatever is possible. Uh, uh, one coach has asked me, if, uh, uh, "What should be the volume of training be for the junior and senior uh, athletes?" Um, I think that really depends on sport to sport. Uh, it it would depend on also the period uh, uh, that you are away from competition. So uh, uh, when you are quite far away from competition, uh, uh, you you want to focus on strength, focus on strength, endurance. Uh, uh, while you are closer to competition, you focus on speed uh, and and intensity and and really sharpness in 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 technique. Um, I think your uh, working closely with the physical trainer uh, scientist would be really helpful at at at, at that time. Uh, yeah. Uh, one viewer has asked, uh, "How do you see sports science uh, thriving in India?" Um, I think, like sports psychologists, uh, we definitely need more quality sports scientists in the country. And uh, I think uh, the Sports Authority of India is making a big move to recruit a lot of sports scientists. So, all you sports scientists out there, please apply to Sports Authority of India. We definitely need much more uh, sports uh, uh, scientists out there. We have a lot of sport scientists in India, but not too many uh, uh, sports scientists. So, uh, 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 yeah, that's very important role to play. And like I said, please try your best to also bridge the gap between assessments in the lab to actually implementing it on the uh, 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 tra training ground. Um, uh, one question I've got is how does the mental states of elite athletes change with the surroundings? Uh, I think the good athletes train under, uh, uh, like, like I said, with a very balanced mindset. The good athletes, the really, really top athletes do not get too affected. It's very important to stay very equitable and balanced in your, in, in your mindset not to get hassled uh, and stressed out un uh, under pressure. And that's something I've really learned from someone like Mary Com. Uh, 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 like I said, what makes her so special is that she has no fear of, of anyone. Uh, there are two things that I would like to add over here. That uh, there's one part of things that are in your control. There's a second part of things that are out of your control. What we as athletes and coaches can do is at least look at things that are within your control and do it to your best. So things that are within your control is being disciplined, going for training sessions on time, uh, uh, working very diligently on our fitness, on our nutrition. Uh, um, th those sort of things are all within our control. What is outside our control? Uh, uh, the climate may be too hot, too cold. Uh, sometimes we don't get equipment on time. Uh, uh, it, 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 uh, sometimes when you go to play a hockey tournament in uh, in, in another country, uh, I remember going to Pakistan and play the India-Pakistan hockey series. There were 50,000 people abusing the Indian hockey team. So uh, it might be hostile environment, hostile crowds. These are things that are out of your control. So don't worry too much about those things. The things that are within your control, try to do those to your best. Uh, from, a v, uh, from one of the viewers, uh, viewers Track and field is international exposure very important. Like I spoke on my point on balance in training and competition, uh, uh, it's very important to have the right balance of competition. Now, very often you might not be able to afford international exposure, uh, especially if you're not in the Indian team and, and you're not being sent by the Federation. So as much as possible, try to have the regular competitions. I, I, the general thumb rule is every two, uh, three months, two or three months, depending on again on the nature of the sport, try to ensure that there are uh, competitions. Uh, yes, I'm still looking for some more questions. Just give me a minute as I try and scroll down. Yeah, 
I think I see lots of coaches logged into the session. So I just want to say a big namaste and thank you to all the coaches out there. Uh, uh, I think you are uh, uh, father, uh, uh, father, guru, mentor, guide, uh, uh, a sports psychologist, everything for us. So I, I think everything we as athletes have achieved so far uh, have been to coaches. So uh, a big namaste and, and thank you to all the coaches uh, uh, that are out there. Okay, uh, uh, one one good good question: How to control negative aggressiveness of a twelve-year-old badminton player on on court? Uh, I think at at different levels, uh, different athletes uh, uh, all go through phases. And like I uh, spoke about, I think uh, Shrikant also took the uh, uh, the topic on uh, adolescence, and that adolescent age group is a very critical age group. Where uh, people, where, where young athletes are going through physical changes, uh, 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 as, as well as mental and emotional changes. So I think what is important over here is showing uh, empathy to the athletes, uh, uh, trying to ensure that we focus and channelize their en energies towards be becoming better at their sport. Sometimes being aggressive uh, uh, is okay. But just ensure that aggression is channeled in the right direction. Uh, 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 Roger Federer is the, is the best example where he was very, very aggressive as a young player. He broke many tennis rackets and, and, and today he's uh, uh, possibly the best uh, tennis player of, of, of all time. Although I must admit, yeah, I'm a Nadal fan, but uh, still I'll acknowledge that uh, 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 Federer is one of the best of all time. And I don't want any questions on this. I don't want to go on a Federer versus Nadal debate over here. Uh, I've, I've, uh, I've got a question saying, are Indian athletes well trained regarding anti-doping? What are steps taken to improve it by SAI, OGQ, GoSports, DSW, especially with the younger athletes? Uh, Raul, excellent question by you. Uh, I think Sports Authority of India as well as the various not-for-profit organizations are taking uh, many steps to do it. Uh, uh, NADA is also playing an, an important role. And here we must understand that uh, uh, uh education is the most important part in 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 fighting the uh, uh, the evils of an, an anti doping and it's not possible to babysit athletes 24/7 to see every single uh, uh, food uh, item supplements or medication that they are taking my request to every single athlete and coach out there is please consult with a uh, 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 your your team doctor before taking any uh, 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 food supplement or medication. Do not take anything on your own. Even if the coach says, "Apka endurance ke liye bahut achha hai, apka strength ke liye bahut achha hai," please do not take, especially any new medication or supplement. Consult a professional. Consult the expert before uh, taking in. And uh, 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 continuous education forums are being held for athletes from different sports from the National Sports Federation to ensure that their athletes are continuously uh, uh, educated on, on, on anti-doping. Uh, again, I'm not an expert here, so I would leave, leave that question, uh, question uh, to the experts. Uh, uh, in, uh, how important is it for athletes to replicate match pressure in training? Like I touched upon my point on uh, training and pressure very very critical i'll repeat the golden rule if you cannot do it in training chances are very high that you will not be able to do it during the match so uh, uh, coaches out there especially as we're closer to the tournament there's no point doing things very slowly very uh, 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 in in a non pressure environment push athletes to the limit uh, remember when we are working with elite athletes we are always pushing them to the limit every single day. And, and that line is very fine. Keep pushing them, but ensuring that they don't go over that line and start getting injured uh, as well. So quality sessions is very important. Take regular feedback from the athletes because for, for an athlete to come to that level, that means they are extremely smart. And 
taking that feedback from the athletes to knowing the challenges that he faces during competition is very uh, critical. Uh, I've got a, a, a question, an interesting question on coaching. Can we produce uh, uh, great coaches like Rick Charlesworth and uh, and Roland Taltmans? I would say that we already have many good uh, uh, top quality coaches in various sports in India. But uh, uh, like I said, the coach is the most important ingredient. We can't have five quality coaches, ten quality coaches at every single level, at grassroots level, intermediate level, uh, elite level. The coaches are critical and we need to be doing more and more coaching education programs. Uh, every state federation, every national federation has to continuously upgrade skills. I would like to say here that Hockey India is, I think, doing an excellent program on uh, on upgrading skills, which is getting more licensed coaches. I know that the All India Football Federation is having very regular licensed coaching programs. Every sport should do this. It's not just enough to have co uh, uh, top coaches at the highest level for our elite athletes. If we don't teach our talented kids, the young, uh, uh, when they are 10, 11, 12 years old, we will never get top athletes uh, uh, then. So, so uh, uh, we have good coaches, but there's still a lot of work to be done to uh, uh, get more and more coaches. Oh, uh, a very good question from Mr. Gurdial Singh Bawa. What is the role of proper officiating and judgment in the ecosystem? Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, that's maybe a point that I have missed about referees, judges, uh, 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 umpires in different sport. Um, I think equally important uh, to ensure in sports like boxing, wrestling, uh, hockey, football, you, you, you uh, name it. There are good officials uh, 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 traveling with the team in training camps where they also have regular sessions on the latest rules of different sports. Rules across sports are changing very, uh, uh, very fast. Scoring systems, <clears throat> if you look at boxing, in the last four years itself, they must have uh, uh, changed the scoring pattern four times. So it's very important that our athletes and coaches stay updated because that, this is where you can actually uh, get that 1% advantage if we can, uh, uh, we can, I wouldn't say manipulate the rules to our favor, but uh, use the rules to our favor, uh, uh, use it in the right positive manner to, uh, to make improvements in our training. It makes us much better prepared for competition and it's ensured to have a good, uh, it's very important to have good quality of referees, officials, empires, etc. Um, another aspect that I want to talk about is having uh, much more female coaches, uh, female trainers and, and physios. 50% of our athletes today are females. From this Tokyo 2020 Olympics onwards, there's, uh, there's a big global push. I'm really happy to see that there's a, give, a big global push towards gen uh, 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 gender equality. Uh, so, uh, uh, India is going to have almost 50% uh, female athletes qualifying for the Tokyo Olympics. I would like to see uh, us really encouraging female coaches, female physios, uh, trainers out, 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 out there. I'd like to see the Sports Authority of India giving more opportunities uh, to female coaches and trainers to be part of the ecosystem. I think with that, uh, uh, I'm going to end the session. Uh, I would like to say again, a big thank you to everyone. I've really enjoyed speaking to all of y'all. I hope you all enjoyed the session. Please uh, uh, do give your feedback to, uh, uh, to Sports Authority of uh, uh, India and, and myself. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, everyone. Uh, God bless and uh, 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 hope all of y'all can play a very important role in improving our uh, the ecosystem for sports in the country. Thank, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Uh, my, my daughter here would just like to say hi, hi, hi to everyone. So uh, uh, she's going to turn six in, uh, uh, in, in, in a month. So uh, she's a budding uh, uh, football player. She doesn't like my sport hockey too much, but she loves uh, all, all, all other sports. So uh, bye, everybody, and uh, uh, all the best and God bless. Thanks. Take care. Bye.